The world of RC planes is rapidly changing and I'm so happy to see this because in the past we would be paying $200 or more for a brushless 2S or 3S equivalent airplane that was just bind and fly. But here we have a very budget friendly, high performance brushless Isheen Mini Warbird. The difference in what I'm talking about versus this is this one's ready to fly. So you pull this out of the box, you snap that prop on the front, and you are ready for takeoff with flight stabilization, two flight batteries, and a USB charge cable. Actually, genuinely ready to fly at a really good price. And what used to hold these mini warbirds back was their brushed motor. It's fine. They're still very good airplanes, especially for the price of like, under a hundred dollars but now we're stepping up into the world of brushless power which means instead of a hundred or more flights on a brushed motor we should be aiming for thousands of flights on this brushless motor also let's not overlook the fact that they are knocking the scale details out of the park even with a clear canopy instruments on the panel and we've got a little actual pilot in there the scale details are awesome the only thing i ask hoping that this flies well, is that if it does, Isheen will start making more variety. As much as I love a P-51, there's enough P-51s out there. Having said that though, let's fly this and see how it does. I should add, one major benefit of this airplane is that it has a JST plug. That means it's a universal connector and we don't have to worry about proprietary batteries. If you want more batteries for this airplane, they are so readily available and so cheap in comparison to other things that exist on the market. Launch with confidence, launch confidence. Good job, Nate, that was super smooth. Perfect, wasn't it? That was good. It's that launch confidence that helps. Oh my goodness, this one is awesome. So I love the size of these mini warbirds too. Even though this is a mini warbird, it still comes in a little bigger than the brushed versions. And it does come with a set of landing gear. So we don't have to do hand launches. We could put the landing gear on, it just snaps right on. I just like the way it looks in the air with the landing gear off. It looks way more scale. I think everybody would probably agree with that. But the landing gear are there, they do exist. And maybe we'll do a follow-up video and possibly compare this Isheen P51 to the Volantex version. Yes, if some of you have watched our channel regularly, you're probably scratching your head saying, wasn't this just recently on the channel? Well, there was a green version of this airplane, a brushless mini warbird, right? And they called it their legend series or legendary series maybe. Uh, so there's Volantex and now Isheen stepping up their game, which is really ironic timing because we've seen some major, multiple major, not just, not like just Horizon, but they are included, uh, brands release their versions of Mini Warbirds finally, ready to fly versions. I'm so happy they exist and they're great options, but it's weird because as soon as like Motion and Horizon got their versions of these, um, Isheen and Volantex was like, yeah, that was that was last year's model, guys. And now we got brushless, <laughs> ready to fly. And look how awesome it's flying. Very silky smooth. Have you guys noticed that? Or do I need to tell you how silky smooth it is? I think it's extremely noticeable. It's really cool. Heard a loud click back there. I think everything's okay. I do have a, a uh, I think that's a swallow flying around me. I don't know if that's the type of bird it is, but there's a bird chasing me. Nice and quiet too. This next pass, I'm gonna do a very quiet pass. I'll shut up, I'll fly really close so you guys can hear it. I love how it doesn't sound grindy because it's a brushless motor and it's not a geared brushed motor. You heard a little bit of click. That is from the prop vibrating at a low RPM. I'll cruise by at a faster RPM and it's even quieter. You can hear it, but just barely. So we've got a couple of cool features with this airplane. We have intermediate mode and advanced mode. Let's go intermediate. We should have steeper bank angles. See how tight we're turning now. We should be able to climb really steep. Oh yeah, oh actually, can we do a full loop in intermediate mode? Yeah, that's weird. Okay, so it's not letting us bank all the way in intermediate mode. Look at that, full bank limits right there. But it lets us loop. I find that very awesome. Because in my opinion, loops are a bit easier to do than rolls. 
So intermediate mode allows you to do loops. So oh, I like that. That's really cool. That's all manual, guys. Okay, so let's go to advanced and see if it can fly in advanced. Let's do a loop. Maybe a cubanate even. Yeah, there we go. Half of a cubanate into a roll. That rolls really nicely. The controllability on this airplane is really nice. Oh, I like this a lot. This is great. It's not flipping and flopping around like crazy. It could maybe use a little bit of trim, but it's not bad. Not bad. Oop, I was going to do a loop and then I just kind of veered off. So let's go for a roll at this angle. Nice. And let's go back into stabilized mode because there's a secret button on here that's kind of actually pretty standardized on these now that should give us the ability to do stunts. So let's try it. Look at that. I pressed the button and did a perfect roll. So I think they actually have some elevator programmed into that. If that's the case, then we should be able to do lower rolls. So I'm going to try that again, going down the runway at about half the altitude. Let's see what this looks like. Look at that. We didn't lose much altitude, but we did lose some. You guys, it's nice to use this hillside as a visual aid. We can really see if we lose any altitude or not. And you can see we probably lost maybe five feet of altitude or so. You know what all these companies need to do? Oh, I'm getting a low low battery alarm, I when believe. You, when you have a stunt button, don't mm -hmm. make it beep. People that are hitting the stunt button want it to be stealthy. Oh, that's right. Like, yeah. make it vibrate or something that's instead it. of beeping. Wait, that was a programmed that way, stunt loop. That way no one knows that you don't know what you're doing. Right. You know, I thought maybe this battery didn't have a full charge, but um, it was on the charger, but I don't know if it uh, sat on there long enough. So I believe we were getting a voltage reading after I had come off that full throttle and it was letting me know that we had a lower battery. Now we have two flight batteries. So I'd like to hear from you guys while I'm just cruising around. Would you like to see a comparison between this and the Volantex version? If we do that, we can do a couple other things in the video, like play around with the landing gear. You let me know what you are thinking. And if anyone has any challenges or things that you'd like to see us do in that direct comparison video, just put it in the comments and we might just make it happen. Maybe Abby flies one, maybe I fly the other. You let us know because these are both awesome airplanes. Now, from memory off the Volantex version to this one, it could just be a matter of low winds today. Could be a matter that this is a silver airplane catching that sun just right. Personally, I'm in love with the Ishin version. I think it looks really cool. It's flying as good as any mini warbird I've ever flown, but it should because Ishin is the whole company that kicked all this off with their very first red tail mini P-51. That is the reason all of these mini warbirds exist because of that home run of an airplane that they did uh, years ago. And what progress, what progress we've made in this hobby with these little airplanes. And they're so budget friendly too, but even at the price they are, Abby works insanely hard to get coupon codes for you guys. So right before this landing, I'm gonna let you guys know. And then after landing, you can check it out. If you click our link, this airplane will be linked in the description box. I'm gonna land in the grass back here to the left, Abby. Okay. Abby might have a coupon code for you guys to save even more money just because you're watching our channel. That was an awesome landing. Here you guys go. I think it's important to show this because a lot of people are gonna buy this. And I think a lot of people that have never flown planes before are gonna buy this. This switch here, when it's facing all the way up or towards you, or if you're looking at it from the side angle, you can see that it's toward the sticks, right? That's in safe mode or auto level mode because it's not actually safe, right? Here's how you know if it's in that mode. If you tip the airplane, let me do it this way for you. And see the ailerons, these control surfaces on the wing? If they're sitting level with the wing, everything is nice and flush, then it's happy because it wants to be level and that's what level looks like on an airplane. But if you tip it, see how that goes down and the other side came up, it'll do the opposite if we tip it the other way. That has stabilized mode on. Same happens with the elevator too, but the easiest thing to see is that. And if you want to be out of stabilized mode, you kick it down to intermediate or all the way down to completely off and listen to this. It's dead quiet, right? That's because it doesn't even have like AS3X equivalency fighting it. So as I was flying, all that flying was just silky smooth, pure flight. So that's a really good airplane. So beginner mode, right? I always recommend that for takeoffs. And my best recommendation is to leave your control 
on the thumb here of the right stick so you have actual control over the airplane and then when you hand launch you do it with your left hand and you give throttle with like your chin or you know your shoulder or something you give a little bit of throttle you launch at about 20 degrees up with a good bit of up elevator and that's how you're going to get your plane in the air and that's in stabilized mode. Once you're in the air, it's so much easier to fly than that, that's probably the hardest part is just launching it. The best tip for landing is right before you touch down, go zero throttle because you don't want your motor to be on when that hits the ground. So now everybody's got 101 uh, basic flight down and I think anybody could have success with this. And not only is it a great airplane, but it is a upgraded, it's an upgraded, awesome, future proofing kind of airplane. So huge home run on Ishin for this. I'm really happy with it. Again, it'll be linked in the description box below. Know that using that link, if you click it and order it through that link, it'll get you to the right airplane because already there's competition out there. And it'll help support our channel and our family at no extra cost to you. Plus, if you want to take advantage of that coupon code that Abby works so hard for, you want to click that link and pair it with the coupon code down in the description box. Kind of interesting point right now with AMA, that's the Academy of Model Aeronautics. If you're a new pilot and you're gonna be getting into this hobby, I highly encourage you to sign up for AMA. There's a lot of talk about what the Academy of Model Aeronautics does for us right now, but I want to promise you that if the AMA didn't exist and we weren't letting them represent us and fight the good fight for our foam toy hobby, I think that we would be much worse off than what we are right now. And a lot of people don't realize that. And it's an unfortunate situation with the AMA because it's so easy for me to sit here and with my $80 that I give them a year, ho-hum, they could do better. Ho-hum, they should do better. Ho-hum, I need better representation. Oh, they could do this, they could do that. Um, what are you doing for the hobby, right? Are you out there going, knocking at the Congress's door to say, look guys, these are just toys. I mean, you know, don't get your undies in a bundle. I'm grateful that the AMA exists because I don't have time to go say, let me play with my toys. So I just want to encourage you guys that do uh, have AMA or if you've ever considered getting AMA to sign up because there's a lot of benefits, but they're catching a little bit of flack right now. Um, and, and maybe at some points they should, right? There are some things that I personally think they definitely could do better. I mean, I've even pitched personally a couple things that were ignored. So can the AMA do better? Yes, they can, but we also need to be grateful that they exist because we'd be way worse off without them. So the AMA will be linked in the description box below. If you sign up as a member, you can call them and ask these questions that you might have to be answered directly from them. And I think that's the best way to get information. Now guys, I'm so grateful we got to get out here and jump in front of the camera and share this experience with you guys. And for that, I'm so grateful to God, just for all my blessings in my life in general. I'm very grateful, but I'm so thankful for you too. I hope you're having an awesome day. And on that note, I wanna say a massive thanks to our Patreon supporters because we couldn't do what we do as often as we do it without your insanely awesome support. Please consider signing up for Patreon if we've ever saved you a couple bucks, steered you in the right direction to get the right airplane, maybe helped you avoid buying the wrong airplane. Please, please, please consider signing up for Patreon. We're very grateful for all of our support. If you love this video, I think you really should check out the Volantex version of this so you know what is out there and what exists. I think this is better, but it's very good for you to see what else is out there too. And that video will be popping up right about now. Thanks for watching. See you there. Bye.